Hey, Vault Hunters, Dead Doogie here with something new that I'm going to be trying out. I'm calling this the um, the One Gun Game Run, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the Wedding Invitation Sniper Rifle through the entire game. Uh, I'm only recording starting here. This is going to be the first episode, possibly the blast, depends on how it goes, but... Uh, I'm starting here because this is where we can change the mayhem level or activate the mayhem mode in the first place so we can play at four at mayhem four which is on par with where we are power wise normal level 50 or TVHM level 50 doesn't really do anything uh, we're just too powerful against enemies at that level unfortunately the story isn't that great, so it's not like I'm doing this because I love the story, which is why I'm talking over everything that they're saying because I really could, I really could care less. But it's an opportunity to go through the different mobbing sections with a cause to do so. Um, because, you know, I've done Proving Grounds and the raid multiple times and all that kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll still be doing that with this gun, but it's going to be more in line with sort of progression you know so you do the story the main campaign do the side missions as we go do the proven grounds do the um uh the, the different slaughters and then finally the raid with just the one gun the the wedding invitation which i i really enjoy this gun so uh, shout out to Cab Flash for hooking me up with the the action skill and um, elemental magazine anointments because for some enemies like you know the ones that have armor and thick shields fire is just gonna be a nightmare so having access to the other elements is gonna make it more palatable so uh, that has been made possible by our very good friend Cab Flash. And since they're talking a bunch of nonsense, it's an opportunity for, for me to shout them out while we wait for uh, some progress to be made. I don't know exactly how long these are going to be. I'm thinking to have them more mission-oriented, you know, so you start a mission and then once it completes, then that'll be the bookmark. So we have this current mission here, and we'll just do this one, and this is just going to be a kind of short intro, I suppose, to, uh, to what's going on with this and um, you know I'm not looking for like a I was gonna do this anyway just because I just wanna use this gun as much as possible but there's so many other guns that I wanna use also but I don't have them yet like I do wanna do a, uh, a John Wick playthrough for Malawan at four player difficulty uh, but I don't have those guns yet so you know I'm not really a farmer and I'm just hoping that with world drops and trading and stuff like that, I'll get my level 53 John Wick guns and I can do my, my John Wick build for the raid at, um, at, in true Malawan takedown mode. So, you know, that's it. I'm going to be slowly playing the game as a way to get the loot that I want vis-a-vis -vis world drops and trading and stuff. And then, you know, periodically go back in and uh, do the Malawan takedown with these what were mean bills but should now be legitimate bills I think I go to see Marcus next but what should now be legitimate bills um, because of how the damage scaling turned out with the, uh, the level cap increase so this is this what I'm doing is just a means to an end to accomplish that objective while still making uh, videos for uh, the, the five people that actually watch my stuff. Thanks, but my firing range is still on fire. It's like I have no problems talking over most of this dialogue because for me, the story mode is the worst part of Borderlands 3. It's not a perfect game. I love the game a lot, but you know, nothing's perfect. It, everything has its weaknesses, its weak points. And for me, the story, with with rare exception, there are a couple side missions um, that I really enjoyed. And when those come up, I'm going to turn my mic down and turn everything else up because I just I just find it hilarious. The stuff with Clay, I love all that stuff, and the stuff with Merle, that mission with Merle, 
uh, it's just it just cracks me the hell up. But everything else is just meh. Okay. Someone lock those poor bastards in before take off. Get him out of there, VH. I don't know why the way she her. says VH annoys me, but it Blow does. Alright, this is almost over. I hope. I miss the old Claptrap. You know, Claptrap used to be one of my favorite NPCs, but in Borderlands 3, I have two now. Uh, it's Maurice and Clay. I also like, as far as the story goes, I also like uh, Tannis. I think Tannis is the best written character in the story, um, the main story thus far. I, I don't see the DLC. I don't put the DLC in the same, um, on the same level. I, I feel like the DLC is its own brilliant old school Borderlands 2, Borderlands 1 type thing. And uh, whoever the writing room was filled with for the main campaign for Borderlands 3, um, yeah, yeah, I think you gotta go see Moxie next. Uh, I, I kind of feel bad for them because whoever the, the writing team was that did the DLC, they were more in tune with what Borderlands is to me than the, the, the team that put together the main story. But it's all good, you know. We're we're in the early stages, and the the DLC has always been the strongest parts of Borderlands story anyway, um, with the exception of Borderlands One, which there wasn't a ton of story in Borderlands One, but the lines, man, they were so good. I I just I really enjoyed the brief things said in Borderlands One. It was just it was just so good. I liked it a lot. I'm a less is more kind of person anyway, so like I would get a kick out of Borderlands one. I know who you are, Moxie. Uh, it's Zane. We had a weekend at the casino. Did you forget me? The other thing I don't like about the story is this: this part where there's this gap between the thing that you just did and the thing that you need to do next where there's all this exposition and there's all this slow walking and you have really nothing to do which makes sense because you're supposed to be listening to the tale being told but once you've done it two times or two and a half because this is my two and a half playthrough um, you know it, it just feels slow and it's it's a hard problem to solve, maybe an impossible problem to solve, on a second and third playthrough. But yeah, it is what it is. All right, VH, go give that turd blossom Earl what he wants. So we'll see how this goes. Whether this ends up being a thing or not. The first time I heard Earl's voice, I had no idea it was Randy Pitchford. But now that I know that it's Randy Pitchford, every time I hear Earl's voice, I hear Randy Pitchford. I think it's up top and on the other side. The one good thing about being so powerful in this early game is I can get away with wearing this snowdrift artifact and just slipping around and not worrying about maximizing my damage because I'm oh giving yeah. up on uh, doing like more damage to frozen enemies. Online, I think I go see Lilith Take again. Bridge, I read somewhere on the forums where someone was saying that you know the story is basically talk to Lilith, talk to Lilith, talk to Lilith, and they're not wrong. Hey, well, uh, now I have to watch this crap. I know these aren't cutscenes, but it would be nice if you could skip some of these scripted things, you know, with a button press and just immediately make progress on the next step of whatever it was that you needed to do. Because I could give two shits about this. Because it's just... I don't know. I, get, I, don't, 
I don't want to be mean about the story. You know, people worked hard on it. It's just not my cup of tea. There's some people that enjoys um, the story that Borderlands 3 presents and the story mission and all that. I am not one of them. I just want to get out there and, and kill things and laugh my ass off. So the story does allow me to kill things, but there's a rare opportunity for me to laugh my ass off. Alright, it's almost over. Going to Promethea, y'all. Hold on to your hats. I remember being excited about this um, when I played it the first time. Like, we're going to get to see our first planet outside of Pandora. And uh, I was standing here like, man, this, this looks pretty cool. Because I have an ultra widescreen monitor and everything. So it's just visually, it looks really, really cool. And... Um, no, so instead of just complaining about what I don't like about the story, I think it's kind of important to also point out the things that they got right. And uh, the visuals for me and the sound design of this game have been just quite, quite excellent. I was going to say exquisite, but I've seen exquisite. Some of the stuff that Destiny 2 did visually uh, are just, just stunningly beautiful. As far as sound design goes, though, I think Borderlands 3 got them beat. Talk to Lilith once again. Listen, about what happened on Pandora. We can't let anything slow us down. You're gonna have to pick up the slack for me. Can I count on you? I got your back, Commander. Good. Now let's make contact with that. Oh man, all this exposition, I'm sorry. It'd be great if it was all okay, so the end of the mission. So like I said, I'm gonna be trying to do it mission based so we don't have these ridiculously long episodes. Um, and we'll see what happens with it. So that's it for this one. Um, thank you guys for watching. And I guess we'll just wait until all this exposition is done. And the next marker comes up. And then I'll, I'll sign off of it. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, do I really care? Nah, man, I'm not going to make you guys suffer through this shit. Alright, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Laters.